Hello, this is Tom Carhill. It's <clears throat> Monday, the 3rd of February, 2010. Uh, this is gonna be a continuation. It's not gonna follow on from the last video. It's just gonna be a continuation of the story vis-a-vis -vis, um, Lee Ravenscroft. L-E-I-G-H. Raven S. Croft. Ravenscroft. Right, so. Uh, I won't go into um, the background because the other videos detail this. This will all be put in a playlist. But um, to cut a long story short, um, he's on the run in Thailand on fake travel documents because he's had to run away from England because he's um, been caught in the past stalking his ex, who's the mother of his children, and um, he beat her up one time. Uh, and then at least one time, but one time where he got caught, and he tried to get his daughter to say she did it instead, even though there was witnesses. He's a complete, he's a complete nut job. Anyway, but um, I only found this out by piecing together things, and also then basically it became clearly obvious that's what happened. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that. It's all detailed in other videos. But the thing is, then he's gone and um, stabbed his wife in the throat with a um, sorry, his ex. It's net, she was net, they were never married. His, his ex, who's the mother of his children, uh, he's probably had a stalking injunction on him because he knows all about these things. And I, I realised, that's how you realise what he's done. Uh, so he's gone round to her council house. I think he's hit the su uh, his, his mentally and um, physically disabled son over the head with a bottle, and then he's gone for his wife, and he's slashed her down the throat. Now his story is the next door neighbours were pissed, and they were throwing bottles, and one of them cut his wife like that. So I knew the story was bullshit as soon as I heard that story. But anyway, <clears throat> now, He's got a fixation. He blames everything on drinking, yeah? Like, so for instance, obviously if someone's dealing with someone like him and there's drink around, they're gonna drink it. But um, the thing is that a very amusing thing happened. I mean, I mean, the thing is you might say, well, there's nothing amusing about this story, but like with everything, there's always quite a lot amusing about it. So basically, this homicidal maniac on the run couldn't fight his way out of a bag of crisps, got convictions only for beating up women and stalking and stuff, yeah? Not for actually doing serious organised crime, which he'll sort of make out of that's what he's got done for. He's never got done for any of that, that's all lies. No proper criminal would deal with him because, for a start off, I think he takes like size for a fight. It looks like, basically his shoes look like children's shoes. I mean, I've got small feet, but within, they're in the, the, you know, people don't think my shoes are children's shoes. Anyway, so basically, he's got this mate called Stuart. Now, we, I can tell you a bit, bit about this Stuart. Stuart, about the day or the day before I left, um, I, I parted company with this Lee, right? Stuart phoned up, and Stuart hasn't got a full-blown Brummie accent, but it's partially Brummie accent, because Lee is from Newark, which is near Nottingham. In Nottingham, really, yeah? But it's in the countryside. But anyway, he phones him up, and Lee always puts things on the speakerphone, and I really don't think he should put things on the speakerphone. I mean, you definitely wouldn't if you've got these mates and they're like criminals. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy is a criminal, but um, not Lee's definitely not. I don't know why he has the time of day for Lee, but anyway... So this guy's there like, oh, you wouldn't believe it. Like, he's going along with my son, you would not believe it. Because it basically, he's, his son, he's estranged from his son since he's a kid. So he's got someone pregnant, but he's not really had any to, to do with the uh, mother or the son. And then I think she was a heroin addict or something, and then it's got taken into care. Anyway, so he didn't know his son for years and years and years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, the guy comes out of the woodwork, and he's a right wrong gun. Can you believe it? Anyway, this guy... Lee actually said to me, he said, no, because it was on speakerphone, he said, no, look up such and such. I think, uh, anyway, look up such and such, um, Duck Pen, Nottingham. No, he said his name, but then as soon as you put his name, Duck Pen, Nottingham. So if you look up Duck Pen, Nottingham, right, you'll come up with this guy who's been caught keeping slaves, right, with this other little gang of fucking complete down and out fucking degenerate freaks. They're, oh my God, just look at the pictures of them. But anyway... I know from the face, the picture that that definitely is his son. I mean, there's, the, 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 the guy looks exactly like him, the, the son. So there's a picture of him. It's in the mirror in, you know, loads and loads and loads of different papers. But anyway, the thing is, he's on... The reason is that the, 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 the Lee's friend, Stuart, who's the only person who speaks to him almost daily, he's um, speaking to him and he's going, you will not believe it. The last time I came to Thailand to stay with you, 
I found out off one of his other Skaghead friends that he was saying to come and do my house over because I've got loads of money, I've got loads of watches, I've got loads of gold. This guy's obviously wealthy, yeah? And he was going, oh, I'd love to get hold of him. I'd love to beat the shit out of him, Un understandably. But you see, the thing is, and then he's going, and cause, but the, he's going, he's lucky he's in prison. And he's going, well, how long do you reckon he'll be in prison for this time? And he's saying, well, he's done the exact same thing he's got. Like, he's got a very light sentence the last time. They got under three years for keeping slaves. They got just over two years. I don't know if they, how much of that they did, but that was the announcement when they were getting convicted. That was when it came out in the papers. So it wouldn't look like they even did that. So, um, yeah, so they'll be getting locked up, hopefully, for quite a long time. But, yeah, anyway, they've been caught keeping slaves again. I mean, you couldn't make this up. But anyway, this same Stuart, on a previous occasion, maybe two or three weeks before that, he'd gone round to Lee's great big palatial, man, man, like, big house in the countryside in Newark. And he's going, look at the state of the place, because Lee's got someone staying there for like 350 quid a month. And the guy's a scaffolder and he keeps saying, Lee, I just don't have the money, I'm, I'm, you know, and he's like, have you paid the council tax? Have you paid the council tax? And he's like, oh, yeah, I just, I don't know, Lee. I don't. <laughs> so the guy's staying there, he's not even paying the bills. And he sent Stuart round to go and investigate. And he's going completely mad on the phone, because you see, when, when he goes mad on the phone, people just ignore him and just put the phone down or just don't even answer him because he's calling normally on Facebook or, you know, WhatsApp or something. So he'll, like, try and use other people's accounts. He's tried to do it with me. So it's like, so I, I, you, you contact that person and then I'll speak to them. You make some excuse to speak to them and then he, he'll cut in on the top and sort of have a go at them. But then they just won't speak to him again. Do you know what I mean? So it's like he's shutting all his doors. He's very sort of... I understand that if you need to get something done, you need to speak to someone and they don't want to speak to you. Sometimes you've got to use some kind of underhand means to do it. But um, whatever, he, he does this all the time. This is his standard modus operandi. This is not like a one, once in a lifetime thing. Anyway, so this steward's gone around there to try and work out if this guy's got a council tax bill to see if it's been paid or not. But of course, he, this guy knows Lee's never coming back to the country. Apart, well, apart from to go to Broadmoor, yeah? After a stay in prison in Thailand, then in the immigration detention centre. Now, no one's going to pay for Lee to get out of that immigration detention centre, right? Nobody's going to pay for that because nobody likes him. And even if they did pay for him to get out of that, he's only going to go back to prison or a mental asylum in England. So it doesn't actually matter. So a lot of people aren't really going to... Oh, maybe someone will eventually pay him. But either way, he's going to be in there for a while because the Thai authorities don't... Um, they don't go around breaking their neck to find out who's going to be there to pay to get you out because they, as far as they're concerned, once you're in there, you know, they, they don't really care. So anyway, so he's going to have a nice stay in prison there and then an even less, not, well, slightly less nice stay in the immigration detention centre. But you see, if he's got a history of being a nutter, right, and like, you know, physically assaulting women constantly, the fact it's only women and he's no danger to men, you know, who aren't, you know, like mentally or physically disabled or something, what's going to happen is they might stick him in the proper prison like the big, the dangerous prison. Now, he's not going to do very well in the big prison because, like, obviously, he looked... Well, how old is he? 50, 55? I mean, he's too old to, uh, to get bummed. He's not... He's an ugly guy. And, um, yeah, he's really, like, really puny in a runt. So, if you, like, if they can't bum him and he's got absolutely no worth and he can't speak a word of Thai and once they find out he's been there for years and he's lost everything, because he will have lost everything then, because he's going to lose all that stuff, because he's already lost one lot of property there. And um, I told him when I went to visit, I said, listen, they're fucking you over. I actually heard them discussing fucking him over as soon as he landed at the place. <coughs> I knew they were even talking exact figures of how much he was bringing, how much they're going to, you know, how long, how many months it was going to be before they pulled the plug on him. Because he'd rented some land off these people and then he's bragging about how he's going to build all these, like, you know, kind of little pods up there, like kind of little bungalow things. And the thing is, I know what they're saying. And they were literally saying, how long are we going to have this cunt staying here? How, why, why didn't he, why hasn't he already done them? I thought we were going to fuck him over like before. And now he's cut turned up and a bag got missing, right? It just, it didn't get on the transferring flight. So he didn't have the 10 grand in English money on him to pay the guy as a kind of deposit and the guy's like well where's it going to come and the son's saying no don't worry it's coming but then the dad starts going 
Well, but I thought we're gonna fuck. I thought we're gonna fuck him over now, and he's 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 been away for a few months. And he hasn't built anything. What the fuck's going on? I thought we we're gonna fuck him now. And like, I'm te this is what he's saying. I'm telling you, look, look, they're gonna fuck you over. And he's saying, oh, ha, 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 they're my friends. I've known them for 18 years. And I'm saying, all right then, okay then. Can you count to 10 in Thai? And he's going, tell me exactly what they said. I said, no. You learn to speak to ten, count to 10 in Thai by the end of the day. I'll tell you exactly what they said. He's like, Puh, huh, I'm gonna go and get stoned. All right then, Lee. That. Yeah, very clever. Right then, so that's that's the story on that front. But the point is, so he's already been fucked over. The other tires all know he's been fucked over. They know he can't speak a word of Thai. They know he relies on this woman who's allegedly his girlfriend, yeah? Yeah, who lives with him despite the fact he's not very good looking. Well, he's ugly and he's a nutter and he's 55 and uh, he's, you know, he doesn't look, he doesn't look good for his age and he's, um, you know, and he goes into psychotic rages and none of the tyres like him. I mean, there's not really anything going on. Also, she's got two almost grown up children, but I think they've been, she's been around him uh, for like a, a year, but those children don't stay in Copang Yang. They stay in Isan and Isan's just a place where there's nothing to do. And you don't get good jobs and it's just farming up there and drinking and drug addiction. That's all there is really there. I mean, I'm not knocking the place, but you know, if you had, some young people and they had the opportunity to live in Thailand in Koh Phang Yang or there you know they can learn to speak English they could probably they would definitely be able to get a job in the tourist industry no no doubt about that so why is she keeping them away clearly because she knows he's a nutter and she doesn't want him anywhere near so she's just taking her chances but not involving her family anyway so he's got this mate Stuart and he's gone round to his house to try and get this guy to give over some money and also explain whether he's paid his council tax or not. And this guy's just said, nah, fuck it, I've just come back from work, I can't be bothered. Leave it out, you can't just turn up and start demanding I do this and that, I, you know, it was, I think it was a Friday or something. Anyway, so the guy, so Lee basically realises the guy has fucked him, right? Nothing Lee can do about it. Lee's effing and blinding, going on and on and on, shouting what he's gonna do to him when he gets him. And the guy's just, the guy said to him, listen, Lee, there's gonna be a time in your life where you realise that every situation in life can't be solved with violence. Uh, so just drop it, or I won't ever speak to you again. Right? Yeah? So, but but this is the funny part. This Stuart is looking around the house, and he's going, oh, look, look in the garden, and he's filming it, and he's letting Lee look at the film. He's going, there's fucking dog shit everywhere. Your house used to be, like, beautiful, and look at the way this guy's treating it. He's not looking after your house. And Lee's hopping mad, going, ah! <laughs> And then... In the side of the film, in the side of the camera view, like what you're seeing now on me, he sees a car and he goes, oh, that's Pierce's car. What's Pierce's car doing at my ass? And it's like, you remember, go back, Lee doesn't like people drinking. Probably because he's been given a few slaps off people who are drunk. That's probably why, because he's gone into some rage and they've just gone, shut up, and like slapped him. Or they just tell him to fuck off and he can't deal with it because he likes to have tantrums and for people to do what he wants. So that's probably what's happened. But you see, in this particular instance, yeah, he's seen his son's car. Now, you and I both know, listening to this, why would his son, who lives with his mum in a council estate, sort of a few miles away, be parking his car outside his dad's house? Why do you normally park your car and leave it outside your mum and dad's house? Could it be that he's going to the pub? I think we know. Pierce Ravenscroft has realised Lee is never coming back and he's going to the pub and he's drinking and he's getting pissed and he knows he's going to get so pissed he can't drive his car home so he's got to leave it parked outside Lee's house anyway more videos coming up um, they, these are just the um, this tip of the iceberg he's a very entertaining character you know the mentally ill can be extremely funny and especially the criminally insane mentally ill people to me, I think they're probably the most amusing, interesting people. That's why people are interested in, um, you know, serial killers and stuff. Of course, a lot of them don't really exist. They're just a cover for other stuff or they're just completely fabricated. But <clears throat> Lee is actually somebody who you would say, the fact that he's physically very, very weak, he's a runt and he's, you know, he's, he, he couldn't, he really, really, you know, he couldn't be, he couldn't really intimidate unless he had a weapon, like a gun. And even then he wouldn't really intimidate you because he'd probably get too excited, he'd start frothing at the mouth and he'd just slob would go all over him and he'd drop the gun or something. You know, like it wouldn't be a guarantee. I mean, put it this way, if you were going to get someone to go and shoot someone, you wouldn't get him to do it because he'd fuck it, he'd fuck it up. Or we'd get excited on the way there and not be able to hold the car. And... <laughs> yeah, he might do something like that. 
and um, you know you can't have him go in there stoned because then he doesn't do it but if he's not stoned yeah I wouldn't really you couldn't really trust him to really do anything properly so anyway so his son's obviously going off and getting pissed now and because he knows Lee's never coming back and when Lee does come back Lee's going to be in a fucking straight jacket heavily sedated in Broadmoor yep okay right so it's to oh, and also remember that um, Lee owes me some money and he still hasn't paid it so these videos are just going to keep coming and as I said do look up his mate Stuart I believe it look it up you'll find it remember duck pen Nottingham slave right and you'll find you'll, you'll find it with duck pen and Nottingham and it's the guy with the blue eyes it's not the first guy in the picture it's the one further down he's more heavy set he's a, not he's a bit fat but he's mainly like more he's more solid like more solid looking guy than the other one and then there's a really scraggly looking disgusting looking woman on it as well <clears throat> anyway so thank you very much it's been Tom Carhill it's Monday the 3rd of February 2020 thank you very much bye bye